so people have been asking me like how do I get how do I get free from sin and um, I remember when I first went through that I had been taught in the church that everybody's a sinner everybody's you know amazing grace and I'm this wretched sinner and all this kind of stuff I just that's how I was raised is that we're always a sinner we're always gonna mess up we're always gonna you know be this wretched person and, and if I look at my my life my history it's so easy to believe that because like kept messing up you know I had a good heart I had good intentions you know um, every born again person even if you're not even born again all of us instinctively deep down inside we have we have the truth you know that the scripture says we have the Ten Commandments in our heart we, we have it unless your conscience was seared which you know can happen if you, uh, but all of us deep down sincerely we want to succeed we want to do the right thing we want to be good we we want to you know we were taught that as children to be good we were taught in schools to be good we were taught uh, in society you know be a good person um, it's just very fundamental why is it so hard and if we want to be good then why is it so hard to be good you know um and and a lot of the things that i did you know uh it, when i was a kid i was pretty mean you know, you know i'll be honest uh, you know, as I got older, I, I learned compassion and, and understood the value of life and, you know, and so the things that I did was more like, you know, you know, like partying and, and polluting myself, drinking and, um, you know, and just like, it wasn't a sin against anybody. It was just something I was doing and a couple of things that I've learned. So number one, the things that God calls sin is not necessarily the same thing that Christians or, or, or religion or people call sin. Um, drinking a beer is not a sin. The sin is when you let that thing lord over you, whether it's an addiction, whether it's, um, you can, you know, uh, where you, you make that the priority in your life. You like it so much that you make it a priority in your life that you're, you know, showing up late for work or you're, you're driving uh, intoxicated and you end up, you know, um, wrecking or you know those kinds of things that the sin is when you the sin is when you let that thing lord over you because Jesus died to set us free to set us free from sin to set us free from everything it's like you do not have to be a slave to anything not addiction not lust not pornography not drugs not alcohol nothing we are set free so that's why we are no longer under the law of sin we, we have that choice it's a choice it's our choice everything in life for us it is absolutely a choice that's what jesus died he died for freedom for us to have that choice the freedom to choose what we want to do um and then the second thing that i learned was that we we have the choice that was the whole reason god created us to be free first peter 1 verse 23 there you go um that um for you were born again what are you born again when you accepted the Lord Jesus Christ sacrifice for you that he forgave he died to uh, pay for your sins he, he paid off your debt your, your you know sin the wages of sin you do something wrong basically you got to pay for it, pay with it for with your life you have to pay for it with your life Jesus died paid for it so our debt's clean right okay so we say okay I accept that payment that Jesus did cool born again and I asked Jesus to be uh, because he he paid for my sin then uh, basically now I owe him so it's like okay I give you my life that's that's what born again is a born back into God you know and, and, and there's there's so much more to that but you know that's the that's the gist of it um, and so uh, the scripture says for you were born again accepted Jesus for you were born again not of corruptible seed right not of corruptible seed but of incorruptible seed because you were born of the spirit of god you be you were born of god the spirit of god is incorruptible it's incorruptible it's impossible to make it corrupt because it is nothing but pure truth pure it's pure goodness righteousness it is that is what the seed of god is right and so that is inside of you that is not corruptible corruptible um for you were born again not of corruptible seed, but of the incorruptible, but of incorruptible seed by the word of God. Like, how did that happen? By the word of God. Who is the word of God? Jesus. If you, if you study that a little more, Jesus is the word of God. It says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God, you know, and the word became flesh. And, and I, and I, you know, chain goes around a little bit, but look at that scripture. Um, and you, you know what I'm talking about. So 
I remember thinking, it's like, if I was born again, if the incorruptible seed of God lives in me, and it took me a while to get to the place where I could accept that, but that's true. That's really, really true. That's how much God loves us. It's like he created us so he could be with us. It says, um, not only that, but uh, of incorruptible seed by the word of God, which lives and abides forever. Lives so that seed lives in me and it abides forever inside of me. It's never going to abandon me. That's what that means. Like God has never abandoned you. He's always been right here, right inside. We always point at our heart, our heart. But like He's in our, you know, as my, as my, uh, uh, my apostle uh, uh, Charles Endepol. He's like He's in my hair. He's in my ear. He's in my toenails. He's like He's all over. Uh, that, we are the flesh. We're the flesh of God now because He lives in us. Um, and so that He's He never left. Like we think we're left. We think we got abandoned or left behind but that's not true we, he's always been there we just didn't know it and we just never accessed him um, and so when you realize that the spirit of God which lives inside of me that's who I am because that's who I have been born again of I've been born of God therefore the spirit of God inside me that's who I am and that seed is not corruptible okay now the flesh uh, meat popsicle as I like to call it now the flesh is like a baby it just wants what it wants it wants comfort it wants security it wants pleasure when a baby wants food it cries when it wants you to clean its diaper it cries when it wants you to pick it up it cries it just whines and cries because it wants what it wants it's a baby so our flesh is kind of like that it just wants what it wants, right? It's not necessarily, it, it, it has a lust or appetite for evil things, right? We like pleasurable things that aren't really good for us. We like it, um, but it just wants what it wants. It's not necessarily, you know, I, I wouldn't go to the extreme like, like the Stoics went to say, oh, everything material and everything flesh is evil. I'm not trying to go to that extreme. It's not necessarily evil. It's just, it just wants what it wants. It's flesh. Um, and so what I've figured out is that if the spirit is who I am and the flesh is part of that who I am, but it's a small part. The small part means that, like it's the baby. My spirit is like the adult. So when the flesh is craving something that's sinful, this is the question. It's like, if I'm a born again child of God and I'm free of sin, and I'm not on the listen. Why do I still mess up? Why do I still crave and want to watch porn? Or why do I still want to get high? Or why do I want all these things? It's, well, Because again, the flesh just wants... Uh, comfort and pleasure and peace and and it just wants those things okay um but here's the here's the thing if i am the spirit of god which is incorruptible the spirit doesn't want those things the spirit knows what's good for it and what's not good for it a baby will will put poison in its mouth because it was a pretty color it looked like it was good to eat that's what the flesh like i, I know or maybe the flesh tasted it. it's like i know that tastes good and they just it just wants what it wants um but as the parent, the spirit, it's my job to just say, no, you're not going to get that. I know you want it, but I'm not going to give that to you. And the answer is just no to the flesh. No. So, um, you know, when it comes down to how do I get free of sin? Number one, you got to acknowledge that who you are. You are born again of God, that God lives inside of you. All right. Acknowledge that. Accept that. It's real. It's true. And I know you know it. There's something in your life you experience. You're like, that was God, right? You know that. And then the flesh, acknowledge the flesh. Sure, it wants what it wants, but the answer is no. Because the treasure inside of me, the fact that I have the spirit of God in me is so massive and amazing and incredible and powerful. Like, like powerful, like raising the dead powerful. I don't have time to mess with sin nature. I don't have time. So no body, flesh, I'm not going to give you that junk food because I need to be in tip top shape to do the things, to do the will of my father, to do, to do the will of God, which is, you know, set the captive free, open the, the, the eyes of the blind, you know, heal the brokenhearted, uh, you know, preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Uh, all these things mean more than life. And if you get that, you will realize how important you are. You realize the treasure inside of you is incorruptible. You realize that the treasure inside of you, the world needs it like so desperately, so desperately. They need you. They need you to be who God created you to be. 
You don't have time for the sin nature. So when you begin to understand that, accept that it's a maturity that happens in your spirit, a maturity that happens in your soul as you grow your soul. Um, and you're just like, no, I'm not giving you those bad sinful things. And suddenly it's just like, I'm just not, you know, it's like a diet when you first start out eating clean. It's, it's hard. You want the McDonald's and you want all the bad stuff. But after a while, you're just like, no, I, I see the benefits of eating, eating healthy and eating clean. And I feel better and I'm stronger and all these things. And pretty soon it's just a lifestyle. And you're like, yeah, no, I'm not going to eat that junk food. I'm not going to contaminate my body like that. Well, in this case, don't contaminate your soul with sin. It's like, I'm not going to eat that junk food because that's all that is. It's just junk food. The world offers you tons of it, promises you to feel great. You know, the McDonald's, the, the commercials are amazing. But every time I eat one, I feel like garbage afterwards. Like, I don't feel well. I don't feel like I just had a meal. So... I hope this has helped you learn how not only are you free from the law, law of sin, but how to be free from the law of sin. God bless you guys. Have a good one.